Chapters 6 to 12 of Judges from the World English Bible. This is a LibriVox recording. All LibriVox recordings are in the public domain. For more information or to volunteer, please visit LibriVox.org. This reading by Anna Roberts. Judges from the World English Bible. Chapters 6 to 12. Chapter 6. The children of Israel did that which was evil in the sight of Yahweh, and Yahweh delivered them into the hand of Midian seven years. The hand of Midian prevailed against Israel, and because of Midian the children of Israel made them the dens which are in the mountains, and the caves and the strongholds. So it was, when Israel had sown, that the Midianites came up, and the Amalekites, and the children of the east, they came up against them, and they encamped against them, and destroyed the increase of the earth, until you come to Gaza, and left no sustenance in Israel, neither sheep, nor ox, nor donkey. For they came up with their livestock and their tents. They came in as locusts for multitude. Both they and their camels were without number, and they came into the land to destroy it. Israel was brought very low because of Midian, and the children of Israel cried to Yahweh. It happened, when the children of Israel cried to Yahweh because of Midian, that Yahweh sent a prophet to the children of Israel, and he said to them, Thus says Yahweh the God of Israel, I brought you up from Egypt, and brought you forth out of the house of bondage. And I delivered you out of the hand of the Egyptians, and out of the hand of all who oppressed you, and drove them out from before you, and gave you their land. And I said to you, I am Yahweh your God. You shall not fear the gods of the Amorites, in whose land you dwell. But you have not listened to my voice. The angel of Yahweh came, and sat under the oak which is in Ophrah, that pertained to Joash the Abiezrite. And his son Gideon was beating out wheat in the winepress, to hide it from the Midianites. The angel of Yahweh appeared to him, and said to him, Yahweh is with you, you mighty man of valor. Gideon said to him, O oh, my lord, if Yahweh is with us, why then has all this happened to us? Where are all his wondrous works which our fathers told us of, saying, Didn't Yahweh bring us up from Egypt? But now Yahweh has cast us off, and delivered us into the hand of Midian. Yahweh looked at him, and said, Go in this your might, and save Israel from the hand of Midian. Haven't I sent you? He said to him, O Lord, how shall I save Israel? Behold, my family is the poorest in Manasseh, and I am the least in my father's house. Yahweh said to him, Surely I will be with you, and you shall strike the Midianites as one man. He said to him, If now I have found favor in your sight, then show me a sign that it is you who talk with me. Please don't go away until I come to you, and bring out my present, and lay it before you. He said, I will wait until you come back. Gideon went in, and prepared a young goat, and unleavened cakes of an ephah of meal. He put the meat in a basket, and he put the broth in a pot, and brought it out to him under the oak, and presented it. The angel of God said to him, Take the meat and the unleavened cakes, and lay them on this rock, and pour out the broth. He did so. The angel of Yahweh stretched out the end of the staff that was in his hand, and touched the meat and the unleavened cakes, and fire went up out of the rock, and consumed the meat and the unleavened cakes, and the angel of Yahweh departed out of his sight. Gideon saw that he was the angel of Yahweh, and Gideon said, Alas, Lord Yahweh, because I have seen the angel of Yahweh face to face. Yahweh said to him, Peace be to you, don't be afraid, you shall not die. Then Gideon built an altar there to Yahweh, and called it, Yahweh is peace. To this day it is still in Ophrah of the Abiezrites. It happened the same night that Yahweh said to him, Take your father's bull, even the second bull seven years old, and throw down the altar of Baal that your father has, and cut down the Asherah that is by it, and build an altar to Yahweh your God on the top of this stronghold, in an orderly way, and take the second bull, and offer a burnt offering with the wood of the Asherah, which you shall cut down. Then Gideon took ten men of his servants, and did as Yahweh had spoken to him. And it happened, because he feared his father's household and the men of the city, so that he could not do it by day, that he did it by night. When the men of the city arose early in the morning, behold, the altar of Baal was broken down, and the Asherah was cut down that was by it, and the second bull was offered on the altar that was built. They said to one another, Who has done this thing? When they inquired and asked, they said, Gideon the son of Joash has done this thing. Then the men of the city said to Joash, Bring out your son that he may die, because he has broken down the altar of Baal, and because he has cut down the Asherah that was by it. Joash said to all those who stood against him, Will you contend for Baal, or will you save him? He who will contend for him, let him be put to death by morning. If he is a god, let him contend for himself, because someone has broken down his altar. 
Therefore on that day he named him Jerob Baal, saying, Let Baal contend against him, because he has broken down his altar. Then all the Midianites and the Amalekites and the children of the east assembled themselves together, and they passed over and encamped in the valley of Jezreel. But the spirit of Yahweh came on Gideon, and he blew a trumpet, and Abiezer was gathered together after him. He sent messengers throughout all Manasseh, and they also were gathered together after him. And he sent messengers to Asher, and to Zebulun, and to Naphtali, and they came up to meet him. Gideon said to God, If you will save Israel by my hand, as you have spoken, behold, I will put a fleece of wool on the threshing floor. If there is dew on the fleece only, and it is dry on all the ground, then I shall know that you will save Israel by my hand, as you have spoken. It was so, for he rose up early on the next day, and pressed the fleece together, and wrung the dew out of the fleece, a bowl full of water. Gideon said to God, Don't let your anger be kindled against me, and I will speak but this once. Please let me make a trial just this once with the fleece. Now let it be dry only on the fleece, and on all the ground let there be dew. God did so that night, for it was dry on the fleece only, and there was dew on all the ground. Chapter 7 Then Jerob Baal, who was Gideon, and all the people who were with him, rose up early, and encamped beside the spring of Herod. And the camp of Midian was on the north side of them, by the hill of Morah, in the valley. Yahweh said to Gideon, The people who are with you are too many for me to give the Midianites into their hand, lest Israel vaunt themselves against me, saying, My own hand has saved me. Now therefore proclaim in the ears of the people, saying, Whoever is fearful and trembling, let him return and depart from Mount Gilead. Twenty-two thousand of the people returned, and ten thousand remained. Yahweh said to Gideon, The people are still too many. Bring them down to the water, and I will test them for you there. It shall be that of whom I tell you, This shall go with you, the same shall go with you. And of whoever I tell you, This shall not go with you, the same shall not go. So he brought down the people to the water. And Yahweh said to Gideon, Every one who laps of the water with his tongue, like a dog laps, you shall set by himself. Likewise, every one who bows down on his knees to drink. The number of those who lapped, putting their hand to their mouth, was three hundred men, but all the rest of the people bowed down on their knees to drink water. Yahweh said to Gideon, By the three hundred men who lapped I will save you, and deliver the Midianites into your hand. Let all the other people go, each to his own place. So the people took food in their hand and their trumpets, and he sent all the men of Israel, every man to his tent, but retained the three hundred men. And the camp of Midian was beneath him in the valley. It happened the same night that Yahweh said to him, Arise, go down into the camp, for I have delivered it into your hand. But if you are afraid to go down, go with Pura, your servant, down to the camp, and you shall hear what they say, and afterward your hands will be strengthened to go down into the camp. Then he went down with Pura, his servant, to the outermost part of the armed men who were in the camp. The Midianites and the Amalekites and all the children of the east lay along in the valley like locusts for multitude, and their camels were without number, as the sand which is on the seashore for multitude. When Gideon had come, behold, there was a man telling a dream to his fellow, and he said, Behold, I dreamed a dream, and behold, a cake of barley bread tumbled into the camp of Midian, and came to the tent, and struck it so that it fell, and it turned upside down so that the tent lay flat. His fellow answered, This is nothing other than the sword of Gideon, the son of Joash, a man of Israel. God has delivered Midian into his hand with all the army. It was so when Gideon heard the telling of the dream, and its interpretation, that he worshipped, and he returned into the camp of Israel, and said, Arise, for Yahweh has delivered the army of Midian into your hand. He divided the three hundred men into three companies, and he put into the hands of all of them trumpets and empty pitchers, with torches within the pitchers. He said to them, Watch me, and do likewise. Behold, when I come to the outermost part of the camp, it shall be that, as I do, so you shall do. When I blow the trumpet, I and all who are with me, then blow the trumpets also on every side of the camp, and shout, For Yahweh and for Gideon. So Gideon and the three hundred men who were with him came to the outermost part of the camp in the beginning of the middle watch, when they had but newly set the watch, and they blew the trumpets and broke in pieces the pitchers that were in their hands. The three companies blew the trumpets and broke the pitchers and held the torches in their left hands and the trumpets in their right hands with which to blow, and they shouted, The sword of Yahweh and of Gideon. They each stood in his place around the camp, and all the army ran, and they shouted and put them to flight. They blew the three hundred trumpets, and Yahweh set every man's sword against his fellow, and against all the army. And the army fled as far as Beth Shittah, toward Zererah, as far as the border of Abel-Meholah, by Tebath. 
The men of Israel were gathered together out of Naphtali, and out of Asher, and out of all Manasseh, and pursued after Midian. Gideon sent messengers throughout all the hill country of Ephraim, saying, Come down against Midian, and take before them the waters, as far as beth Bera, even the Jordan. So all the men of Ephraim were gathered together, and took the waters as far as beth Bera, even the Jordan. They took the two princes of Midian, Oreb and Zeb, and they killed Oreb at the rock of Oreb, and Zeb they killed at the winepress of Zeb, and pursued Midian, and they brought the heads of Oreb and Zeb to Gideon beyond the Jordan. Chapter 8 The men of Ephraim said to him, Why have you treated us this way, that you didn't call us when you went to fight with Midian? They rebuked him sharply. He said to them, What have I now done in comparison with you? Isn't the gleaning of the grapes of Ephraim better than the vintage of Abiezer? God has delivered into your hand the princes of Midian, Oreb and Zeb. What was I able to do in comparison with you? Then their anger was abated toward him when he had said that. Gideon came to the Jordan, and passed over, he and the three hundred men who were with him, faint yet pursuing. He said to the men of Succoth, Please give loaves of bread to the people who follow me, for they are faint, and I am pursuing after Zeba and Zalmunna, the kings of Midian. The princes of Succoth said, Are the hands of Zeba and Zalmunna now in your hand, that we should give bread to your army? Gideon said, Therefore, when Yahweh has delivered Zeba and Zalmunna into my hand, then I will tear your flesh with the thorns of the wilderness and with briars. He went up there to Penuel, and spoke to them in the same way, and the men of Penuel answered him as the men of Succoth had answered him. He spoke also to the men of Penuel, saying, When I come again in peace, I will break down this tower. Now Zeba and Zalmunna were in Karkor, and their armies with them, about fifteen thousand men, all who were left of the army of the children of the east, for there fell one hundred twenty thousand men who drew sword. Gideon went up by the way of those who lived in tents, on the east of Noba and Dogbeha, and struck the army, for the army was secure. Zeba and Zalmunna fled, and he pursued after them, and he took the two kings of Midian, Zeba and Zalmunna, and confused all the army. Gideon the son of Joash returned from the battle from the ascent of Heres. He caught a young man of the men of Succoth, and inquired of him, and he described for him the princes of Succoth, and its elders, seventy-seven men. He came to the men of Succoth, and said, See Zeba and Zalmunna, concerning whom you taunted me, saying, Are the hands of Zeba and Zalmunna now in your hand, that we should give bread to your men who are weary? He took the elders of the city, and thorns of the wilderness and briars, and with them he taught the men of Succoth. He broke down the tower of Penuel, and killed the men of the city. Then he said to Zeba and Zalmunna, What kind of men were they whom you killed at Tabor? They answered, They were like you, each one resembled the children of a king. He said, They were my brothers, the sons of my mother. As Yahweh lives, if you had saved them alive, I would not kill you. He said to Jether his firstborn, Get up and kill them. But the youth didn't draw his sword, for he was afraid, because he was yet a youth. Then Zeba and Zalmunna said, Rise and fall on us, for as the man is, so is his strength. Gideon arose, and killed Zeba and Zalmunna, and took the crescents that were on their camels' necks. Then the men of Israel said to Gideon, Rule over us, both you and your son, and your son's son also, for you have saved us out of the hand of Midian. Gideon said to them, I will not rule over you, neither shall my son rule over you. Yahweh shall rule over you. Gideon said to them, I would make a request of you, that you would give me every man the earrings of his spoil, for they had golden earrings, because they were Ishmaelites. They answered, We will willingly give them. They spread a garment, and every man threw the earrings of his spoil into it. The weight of the golden earrings that he requested was one thousand and seven hundred shekels of gold, besides the crescents, and the pendants, and the purple clothing that was on the kings of Midian, and besides the chains that were about their camels' necks. Gideon made an ephod of it, and put it in his city, even in Ophrah. And all Israel played the prostitute after it there, and it became a snare to Gideon and to his house. So Midian was subdued before the children of Israel, and they lifted up their heads no more. The land had rest forty years in the days of Gideon. Jerubbaal the son of Joash went and lived in his own house. Gideon had seventy sons conceived from his body, for he had many wives. His concubine, who was in Shechem, she also bore him a son, and he named him Abimelech. Gideon the son of Joash died in a good old age, and was buried in the tomb of Joash his father, in Ophrah of the Abiezrites. It happened, as soon as Gideon was dead, that the children of Israel turned again, and played the prostitute after the Baals, and made Baal-bareth their god. 
The children of Israel didn't remember Yahweh their God, who had delivered them out of the hand of all their enemies on every side, neither did they show kindness to the house of Jeroboam, Gideon, according to all the goodness which he had shown to Israel. Chapter 9 Abimelech the son of Jeroboam went to Shechem, to his mother's brothers, and spoke with them, and with all the family of the house of his mother's father, saying, Please speak in the ears of all the men of Shechem. Is it better for you that all the sons of Jeroboam, who are seventy persons, rule over you, or that one rule over you? Remember also that I am your bone and your flesh. His mother's brothers spoke of him in the ears of all the men of Shechem, all these words, and their hearts inclined to follow Abimelech, for they said, He is our brother. They gave him seventy pieces of silver out of the house of Baal-Bareth, with which Abimelech hired vain and light fellows who followed him. He went to his father's house at Ophrah, and killed his brothers, the sons of Jeroboam, being seventy persons, on one stone. But Jotham, the youngest son of Jeroboam, was left, for he hid himself. All the men of Shechem assembled themselves together, and all the house of Milo, and went and made Abimelech king, by the oak of the pillar that was in Shechem. When they told it to Jotham, he went and stood on the top of Mount Gerizim, and lifted up his voice, and cried, and said to them, Listen to me, you men of Shechem, that God may listen to you. The trees went forth on a time to anoint a king over them, and they said to the olive tree, Reign over us. But the olive tree said to them, Should I leave my fatness, with which by me they honor God and man, and go to wave back and forth over the trees? The trees said to the fig tree, Come and reign over us. But the fig tree said to them, Should I leave my sweetness and my good fruit, and go to wave back and forth over the trees? The trees said to the vine, Come and reign over us. The vine said to them, Should I leave my new wine, which cheers God and man, and go to wave back and forth over the trees? Then all the trees said to the bramble, Come and reign over us. The bramble said to the trees, If in truth you anoint me king over you, then come and take refuge in my shade, and if not, let fire come out of the bramble, and devour the cedars of Lebanon. Now therefore, if you have dealt truly and righteously, in that you have made Abimelech king, and if you have dealt with Jeroboam in his house, and have done to him according to the deserving of his hands, for my father fought for you, and risked his life, and delivered you out of the hand of Midian, and you have risen up against my father's house this day, and have slain his son seventy persons on one stone, and have made Abimelech, the son of his female servant, king over the men of Shechem, because he is your brother. If you then have dealt truly and righteously with Jeroboam and with his house this day, then rejoice in Abimelech, and let him also rejoice in you. But if not, let fire come out from Abimelech, and devour the men of Shechem, and the house of Milo, and let fire come out from the men of Shechem, and from the house of Milo, and devour Abimelech. Jotham ran away, and fled, and went to Beer, and lived there, for fear of Abimelech his brother. Abimelech was prince over Israel three years. God sent an evil spirit between Abimelech and the men of Shechem, and the men of Shechem dealt treacherously with Abimelech, that the violence done to the seventy sons of Jeroboam might come, and that their blood might be laid on Abimelech their brother, who killed them, and on the men of Shechem, who strengthened his hands to kill his brothers. The men of Shechem set an ambush for him on the tops of the mountains, and they robbed all who came along that way by them. And it was told Abimelech, Gal the son of Ebed came with his brothers, and went over to Shechem, and the men of Shechem put their trust in him. They went out into the field, and harvested their vineyards, and trod the grapes, and held festival, and went into the house of their god, and ate and drank, and cursed Abimelech. Gal, the son of Ebed, said, Who is Abimelech, and who is Shechem, that we should serve them? Isn't he the son of Jeroboam, and Zebul his officer? Serve the men of Hamor, the father of Shechem. But why should we serve him? Would that this people were under my hand, then I would remove Abimelech. He said to Abimelech, Increase your army, and come out. When Zebul, the ruler of the city, heard the words of Gal, the son of Ebed, his anger was kindled. He sent messengers to Abimelech craftily, saying, Behold, Gal the son of Ebed and his brothers have come to Shechem, and behold, they incite the city against you. Now therefore go up by night, you and the people who are with you, and lie in wait in the field, and it shall be that in the morning, as soon as the sun is up, you shall rise early and rush on the city, and behold, when he and the people who are with him come out against you, then may you do to them as you shall find occasion." Abimelech rose up, and all the people who were with him, by night, and they laid wait against Shechem in four companies. Gal, the son of Ebed, went out, and stood in the entrance of the gate of the city, and Abimelech rose up, and the people who were with him, from the ambush. When Gal saw the people, he said to Zebul, 
Behold, people are coming down from the tops of the mountains. Zebul said to him, You see the shadow of the mountains as if they were men. Gaul spoke again, and said, Behold, people are coming down by the middle of the land, and one company comes by the way of the oak of Maonenim. Then Zebul said to him, Now where is your mouth that you said, Who is Abimelech, that we should serve him? Isn't this the people that you have despised? Please go out now and fight with them. Gaul went out before the men of Shechem, and fought with Abimelech. Abimelech chased him, and he fled before him, and many fell wounded even to the entrance of the gate. Abimelech lived at Arima, and Zebul drove out Gaul and his brothers, that they should not dwell in Shechem. It happened on the next day that the people went out into the field, and they told Abimelech. He took the people, and divided them into three companies, and laid wait in the field, and he looked, and behold, the people came forth out of the city. He rose up against them, and struck them. Abimelech and the companies that were with him rushed forward, and stood in the entrance of the gate of the city, and the two companies rushed on all who were in the field, and struck them. Abimelech fought against the city all that day, and he took the city, and killed the people who were therein, and he beat down the city, and sowed it with salt. When all the men of the tower of Shechem heard of it, they entered into the stronghold of the house of Elbereth. It was told Abimelech that all the men of the tower of Shechem were gathered together. Abimelech went up to Mount Zalmon, he and all the people who were with him, and Abimelech took an axe in his hand, and cut down a bough from the trees, and took it up, and laid it on his shoulder, and he said to the people who were with him, What you have seen me do, make haste, and do as I have done. All the people likewise each cut down his bough, and followed Abimelech, and put them at the base of the stronghold, and set the stronghold on fire on them, so that all the people of the tower of Shechem died also, about a thousand men and women. Then went Abimelech to Thebes, and encamped against Thebes, and took it. But there was a strong tower within the city, and there fled all the men and women, and all they of the city, and shut themselves in, and went up to the roof of the tower. Abimelech came to the tower, and fought against it, and drew near to the door of the tower to burn it with fire. A certain woman cast an upper millstone on Abimelech's head, and broke his skull. Then he called hastily to the young man his armor-bearer, and said to him, Draw your sword, and kill me, that men may not say of me, A woman killed him. His young man thrust him through, and he died. When the men of Israel saw that Abimelech was dead, they departed every man to his place. Thus God requited the wickedness of Abimelech, which he did to his father in killing his seventy brothers. And all the wickedness of the men of Shechem did God requite on their heads, and on them came the curse of Jotham the son of Jerobbaal. Chapter 10 After Abimelech there arose to save Israel Tola the son of Pua, the son of Dodo, a man of Issachar, and he lived in Shamir in the hill country of Ephraim. He judged Israel twenty-three years, and died, and was buried in Shamir. After him arose Jair the Gileadite, and he judged Israel twenty-two years. He had thirty sons who rode on thirty donkey colts, and they had thirty cities, which are called havoth Jair to this day, which are in the land of Gilead. Jair died, and was buried in Camon. The children of Israel again did that which was evil in the sight of Yahweh, and served the Baals, and the Ashtaroth, and the gods of Syria, and the gods of Sidon, and the gods of Moab, and the gods of the children of Ammon, and the gods of the Philistines. And they forsook Yahweh, and didn't serve him. The anger of Yahweh was kindled against Israel, and he sold them into the hand of the Philistines, and into the hand of the children of Ammon. They troubled and oppressed the children of Israel that year. For eighteen years they oppressed all the children of Israel that were beyond the Jordan, in the land of the Amorites, which is in Gilead. The children of Ammon passed over the Jordan to fight also against Judah, and against Benjamin, and against the house of Ephraim, so that Israel was very distressed. The children of Israel cried to Yahweh, saying, We have sinned against you, even because we have forsaken our God, and have served the Baals. Yahweh said to the children of Israel, Didn't I save you from the Egyptians, and from the Amorites, from the children of Ammon, and from the Philistines? The Sidonians also, and the Amalekites, and the Moabites, oppressed you, and you cried to me, and I saved you out of their hand. Yet you have forsaken me, and served other gods. Therefore I will save you no more. Go and cry to the gods which you have chosen. Let them save you in your time of distress. The children of Israel said to Yahweh, We have sinned. Do you to us whatever seems good to you. Only deliver us, please, this day. They put away the foreign gods from among them, and served Yahweh and his soul was grieved for the misery of Israel. Then the children of Ammon were gathered together, and encamped in Gilead. The children of Israel assembled themselves together, and encamped in Mizpah. The people, the princes of Gilead, said to one another, 
What man is he who will begin to fight against the children of Ammon? He shall be head over all the inhabitants of Gilead. Chapter 11 Now Jephthah the Gileadite was a mighty man of valor, and he was the son of a prostitute, and Gilead became the father of Jephthah. Gilead's wife bore him sons, and when his wife's sons grew up, they drove out Jephthah and said to him, You shall not inherit in our father's house, for you are the son of another woman. Then Jephthah fled from his brothers, and lived in the land of Tob, and there were gathered vain fellows to Jephthah, and they went out with him. It happened, after a while, that the children of Ammon made war against Israel. It was so that when the children of Ammon made war against Israel, the elders of Gilead went to get Jephthah out of the land of Tob, and they said to Jephthah, Come and be our chief, that we may fight with the children of Ammon. Jephthah said to the elders of Gilead, Didn't you hate me and drive me out of my father's house? Why have you come to me now when you are in distress? The elders of Gilead said to Jephthah, Therefore we have turned again to you now, that you may go with us and fight with the children of Ammon, and you shall be our head over all the inhabitants of Gilead. Jephthah said to the elders of Gilead, If you bring me home again to fight with the children of Ammon, and Yahweh deliver them before me, shall I be your head? The elders of Gilead said to Jephthah, Yahweh shall be witness between us, surely, according to your words, so will we do. Then Jephthah went with the elders of Gilead, and the people made him head and chief over them, and Jephthah spoke all his words before Yahweh in Mizpah. Jephthah sent messengers to the king of the children of Ammon, saying, What have you to do with me, that you have come to me to fight against my land? The king of the children of Ammon answered to the messengers of Jephthah, Because Israel took away my land, when he came up out of Egypt, from the Arnon even to the Jabbok, and to the Jordan, now therefore restore that territory again peaceably. Jephthah sent messengers again to the king of the children of Ammon, and he said to him, Thus says Jephthah, Israel didn't take away the land of Moab, nor the land of the children of Ammon. But when they came up from Egypt, and Israel went through the wilderness to the Red Sea, and came to Kadesh, then Israel sent messengers to the king of Edom, saying, Please let me pass through your land. But the king of Edom didn't listen. In the same way he sent to the king of Moab, but he would not, and Israel stayed in Kadesh. Then they went through the wilderness, and went around the land of Edom, and the land of Moab, and came by the east side of the land of Moab. And they encamped on the other side of the Arnon, but they didn't come within the borders of Moab, for the Arnon was the border of Moab. Israel sent messengers to Sion, king of the Amorites, the king of Heshbon, and Israel said to him, Please, let us pass through your land to my place. But Sion didn't trust Israel to pass through his border. But Sihon gathered all his people together, and encamped in Jahaz, and fought against Israel. Yahweh, the God of Israel, delivered Sihon and all his people into the hand of Israel, and they struck them. So Israel possessed all the land of the Amorites, the inhabitants of that country. They possessed all the border of the Amorites, from the Arnon even to the Jabbok, and from the wilderness even to the Jordan. So now Yahweh, the God of Israel, has dispossessed the Amorites from before his people Israel. And should you possess them? Won't you possess that which Chemosh your God gives you to possess? So whoever Yahweh our God has dispossessed from before us, them we will possess. Now are you anything better than Balak the son of Zippor, king of Moab? Did he ever strive against Israel, or did he ever fight against them? While Israel lived in Heshbon and its towns, and in Aror and its towns, and in all the cities that are along by the side of the Arnon, three hundred years, why didn't you recover them within that time? I therefore have not sinned against you, but you do me wrong to wage war against me. Yahweh, the judge, be judged this day between the children of Israel and the children of Ammon. However, the king of the children of Ammon didn't listen to the words of Jephthah which he sent him. Then the spirit of Yahweh came on Jephthah, and he passed over Gilead and Manasseh, and passed over Mizpah of Gilead, and from Mizpah of Gilead he passed over to the children of Ammon. Jephthah vowed a vow to Yahweh, and said, If you will indeed deliver the children of Ammon into my hand, then it shall be that whatever comes forth from the doors of my house to meet me, when I return in peace from the children of Ammon, it shall be Yahweh's, and I will offer it up for a burnt offering. So Jephthah passed over to the children of Ammon to fight against them, and Yahweh delivered them into his hand. He struck them from Aror until you come to Minith, even twenty cities, and to abel Cherimim with a very great slaughter. So the children of Ammon were subdued before the children of Israel. Jephthah came to Mizpah to his house, and behold, his daughter came out to meet him with tambourines and with dances, and she was his only child. 
Besides her he had neither son nor daughter. It happened when he saw her that he tore his clothes and said, Alas, my daughter, you have brought me very low, and you are one of those who trouble me, for I have opened my mouth to Yahweh, and I can't go back. She said to him, My father, you have opened your mouth to Yahweh. Do to me according to that which has proceeded out of your mouth, because Yahweh has taken vengeance for you on your enemies, even on the children of Ammon. She said to her father, Let this thing be done for me. Let me alone two months, that I may depart, and go down on the mountains, and bewail my virginity, I and my companions. He said, Go. He sent her away for two months, and she departed, she and her companions, and mourned her virginity on the mountains. It happened at the end of two months that she returned to her father, who did with her according to his vow which he had vowed, and she was a virgin. It was a custom in Israel that the daughters of Israel went yearly to celebrate the daughter of Jephthah the Gileadite four days in a year. Chapter 12 The men of Ephraim were gathered together, and passed northward, and they said to Jephthah, Why did you pass over to fight against the children of Ammon, and why didn't you call us to go with you? We will burn your house around you with fire. Jephthah said to them, I and my people were at great strife with the children of Ammon, and when I called you, you didn't save me out of their hand. When I saw that you didn't save me, I put my life in my hand, and passed over against the children of Ammon, and Yahweh delivered them into my hand. Why then have you come up to me this day to fight against me? Then Jephthah gathered together all the men of Gilead, and fought with Ephraim. And the men of Gilead struck Ephraim, because they said, You are fugitives of Ephraim, you Gileadites, in the midst of Ephraim, and in the midst of Manasseh. The Gileadites took the fords of the Jordan against the Ephraimites. It was so that when the fugitives of Ephraim said, Let me go over, the men of Gilead said to him, Are you an Ephraimite? If he said no, then they said to him, Now say Shibboleth. And he said Sibboleth, for he couldn't manage to pronounce it right. Then they seized him, and killed him at the fords of the Jordan. At that time forty-two thousand of Ephraim fell. Jephthah judged Israel six years. Then Jephthah the Gileadite died, and was buried in the cities of Gilead. After him Ibzan of Bethlehem judged Israel. He had thirty sons, and thirty daughters he sent abroad, and thirty daughters he brought in from abroad for his sons. He judged Israel seven years. Ibzan died, and was buried at Bethlehem. After him Elon the Zebulonite judged Israel, and he judged Israel ten years. Elon the Zebulonite died, and was buried in Aijalon, in the land of Zebulun. After him Abdon the son of Hillel the Parathonite judged Israel. He had forty sons, and thirty sons' sons, who rode on seventy donkey colts, and he judged Israel eight years. Abdon the son of Hillel the Parathonite died, and was buried in Parathon, in the land of Ephraim, in the hill country of the Amalekites. End of chapters 6 to 12